Hello, YouTuber. Um, in this video, we are going to briefly build on what we've done in our previous video here, uh, which was to talk about making a reading list for extended essay and talk essays. But today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the talk essay itself, although it can be applied to the extended essay anyway. So last time, we said that it was important to define your questions for the EE and also for talk to um, try to understand your question and that you needed to make a reading list, uh, hitting the terms that you were thinking about um, in investigating further. Uh, what I wanted to say is that sometimes this has been an issue in the past and some students have found very difficult to be able to um, uh, kind of go on with those initial steps. And rightly so, because it's fairly complicated in terms of it's a kind of a daunting task when you think about it. So first of all, um, what I would like to focus in this video is particularly how do you get from your question and to start pre-planning and brainstorming uh, about your what you could be writing about. Uh, in effect, this starts off by decoding the question and making sure you understand the different underpinnings of your the question that you've chosen for your talk. And you need to do that arguably for pretty much any questions. And perhaps sometimes you will do it in class with your teacher, um, which you should do. The next move, once you have understood which question you think you would be the most interested in, is to think about how you're going to start pulling those ideas together. And for the talk essay especially, it means um, talking about your areas of knowledge, and talking about your real life situation. And this is very important because those work alongside with the question uh, that you've chosen. So you need to find those areas that are relevant to your point and uh, your real life situations that are relevant to your point. And you can do this by just brainstorm or a thought shower, as we are supposed to be saying, apparently. Uh, you should be putting some ideas down that when you see this question, what does spring to mind? Make a list that is not ordered, anything in any order, and then you can go on to ordering those ideas from important to less important to relevant to in, irrelevant uh, at the step, uh, step three, basically, which is where it's going to come next. So once you've got your step two, you've got all your ideas together, all the things that could come up, then you need to uh, start uh, putting this into a mind map, I think that's the easiest way to do it, but you could do it the way, whichever way you think is the most um, useful for you. In step three, though, it's about looking at all those ideas and start thinking about ordering them in a certain um, hierarchy. So thinking, uh, here we've got my question, uh, and then we've got one side of the question, and then the other side of the question, and then obviously areas of knowledge, uh, of knowledge and also real life situation for claims and counterclaims. So basically, you're starting to opposing your arguments and your ideas. And that should help you to understand even more your question. So as you are unpacking your question, you should get getting grips of understanding how your question work. Okay, so obviously, not all questions are like the questions I've got here. They are not to always in two parts, but obviously, at some point within the uh, process, you will need to make sure that you actually mention those two parts. And also, it's asking you clear instructions. Does it matter? Uh, how does it influence or influence how, sorry, uh, in the second, before the second part of the question? So, highlighting and proceeding those, those steps can be very useful in order to uh, think about the next part because the next part is going to be able to go back to your uh, reading list and to think about uh, your, for example, your source, your keywords, the things that you're going to try to investigate further in relation to that specific idea. So it's about making uh, all those ideas going into possible areas of investigation that you are going to investigate into your reading list. And what a reading list essentially is, is in fact just a collection of things that you think ways or pathways you could explore. And some pathways 
will be blocked and you will think okay that's a dead end but some pathways will explore uh, or turn into even more complex uh, branch and sub branches of those pathways so you're going to investigate the problem of one question and it's going to land you in another question which is going to land you in another question all of which and all those questions will go back to your exam question of your talk which is fairly similar process in uh, your extended essay so hopefully you think uh, that's is probably a good idea so before you start planning and writing down the plan for your essay, which is what we've said, we need to uh, make sure to make a plan with introduction, main body and conclusion. But before going to that stage, you need to have something that is structured enough so you have access to one, ordering your ideas, well, putting your ideas down first in step two, and step three, putting those ideas in a structured way in your mind. And that's why perhaps your teachers are asking you to make um, or fill up some templates, uh, essays, which help you to structure your ideas and how you're going to deal with those. If you've got any good tips that your teachers have shared with you, or you are a teacher and you think this is a good tip or you don't like about this video, then feel free to let me know um, in the comments below what you think could be improved, how you do it with your classes, what does your teacher do that worked for you. You can share some resources. YouTube is a wonderful thing. So if you enjoyed this video as well, like and subscribe and share with someone you love. Bye.